You might remember this uh, kit that we built a few months ago. Just a cheap Atherin Shake the Box kit. Went together very easily. It was undecorated. I painted it. I uh, deckled it. The decals aren't beautiful, but they look okay. Now, I'm going to weather it. Weathering is basically making it look grubby and grimy and old and used. Because... Um, you know, nothing out in the real world looks like it just rolled out of the paint shop. Well, okay, one or two things for a day or two, but you know. So, for weathering, I'm going to need some materials. So a few things that I've showed you before. I've got a couple of washes, a black wash and a sienna wash, which are just made from alcohol and ink um, that I got at an art supply store. Um, this particular ink is translucent black ink. Um, whole 50 cents for that bottle. Um, this one was five bucks and it's uh, raw sienna, which is a kind of a rusty sort of a color. You'll see it in a while. So that's, that's going to be some of it. Those are going to be used for washes. Um, for dry brushing and highlighting, I'm going to use some of these kind of craft paints and I've got a fair number of them in in an assortment of colors it's a camel flesh tone probably won't need that one burnt umber it's a dark brown raw umber uh, white cinnamon black of course uh, what do you got here earth brown yeah that sounds like a good one russet yeah what is that one? Neutral gray. Maybe put a bit of that in. Trail tan. You get the idea. Um, so I'll probably use those. There's this set here, which looks like standard testers bottles, because they are standard testers bottles, but they're the polyscale line, which is a water-based paint, so you don't have to dick around with thinners. Um, this particular set is originally sold as a weathering set, so Age white, dirt age, concrete, railroad tie, brown, grimy black, mud, rust, and new naval gray. So we may use some of those. Um, what else have I got? I've also got some other model colors here. I don't even know what color that one is. That one's mud, uh, concrete, uh, boxcar red, okay, yellow, I'm probably not going to need. What's that one? Sand. So there's those as options. Other things, I've got some uh, just bricks of uh, tempera paint, powdered tempera paint or whatever, again from the craft store. Um, these are basically just, uh, you know, kids water-based paint. I've got a black, a kind of a rusty brown and a gray. So I might choose to use some of those. Also got some uh, artist's charcoal pencil. So if I need some some charcoal dust or, or black dust I can use that um, these ones are also these uh, pucks of dry paint are also probably uh, grind some off with a file or a knife or something to uh, to use as, them as a powder uh, what else have I got around here oh yeah when I'm all done I've got a spray of dull coat to sort of hold it all together so it doesn't rub off um, so there's that um, I've got some alcohol and some water back there. Other supplies. Uh, paper towel because it's going to get messy. Um, just a board to protect my cutting mat. Just because I, mean, I don't really care how messed up the cutting mat gets, but I don't want to end up having to replace it like AVE did. I mean, come on, you know I'm cheap. Uh, what else am I going to need? An assortment of paint brushes. Some fine ones for getting in little details I wanted to. Some kind of crappy ones from the dollar store. Or just for smushing stuff around. I think that's the majority of... Oh no, wait a minute. Um, what else? Um, a wire brush just for putting a bit of texture on the boards on the deck of the flat car. That particular one's brass. I think I've got a steel one around here somewhere. I might, to scrape a bit deeper texture in, might just drag the edge of my 
saw blade across that, um, with X-Acto knives and other standard tools. Anyway, you don't need all this stuff. This is, remember, I've been, I was an active model railroader like 15 years ago for a bunch of years. Uh, most of this stuff's been sitting on the shelves collecting fungus for, since my kids were born. Um, so it's, you don't need all this stuff. You can get away with a lot less, um, and then just pick up what you need as you go along. These paints are from the dollar store. Yeah. Um, that, that ink was on sale. That's from a craft store. These are from a dollar store. These artist charcoal pencils are from a dollar store. Um, some of the basic modeling tools you've probably already got. So you don't need to get carried away with all this stuff that I'm going to use. And I'm certainly not going to use all of it. Weathering is one of those things that if you ask 20 modelers how they do it, you're going to get 30 different answers. This is just one of the ways that I'm going to do it. You may like how it turns out. You may think it looks like crap when I'm done. That's fine. Um, I'd love to see, uh, see some other, uh, modelers put out their, oh, not really tutorial, but method, uh, show off what they do. There's a lot of ways to do this. And this is how I happen to be going to be doing this one. Let's get at her. So the first thing I'm going to do is make it look a little bit beat up and scuffed. Um, that deck looks freshly painted because it is. This car, um, it's new date on the side is several decades earlier than my modeling era. So I'm going to grind a bit of texture, random texture into the deck boards. Um, that's one way of doing it. That's another way of doing it. And I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, Matter of fact, imperfect is probably better. Yeah, that's put, can you see that there's some texture in there? You know, give that a bit of a scrub that direction. Um, also knocks off some of the soft fuzzy bits. Already that looks, yeah, that looks like it's been lived in a little bit. All right. Um, now then, where am I going to put a couple of notches in here? Put some heavier nicks. Make it look like stuff has been dropped or dragged across. Knock the corner off some of these boards here. At odd angles, do a couple on this side too. Near the stake pockets is a good choice because that's where where stuff's going to get tied down, right? Um, not everyone. I mean, these are so I'm going to put some some layers of paint on this thing too, right? Over time. Um, Maybe some of those stake pockets will get a little bit bent. Hmm, where's the tool to do that with? Let's try this and see how it works. Uh, I'm going to guess that over time, some of these stake pockets got a little bit bent. I'm just going to soften the plastic just a little bit. And put a little screwdriver in there and just bend it out just a little bit deform it a bit. Maybe do one more. Okay, you want to just look lived in and kind of imperfect. And beat up a little bit. That one is very beat up. Okay, that might be a little bit carried away, but I'm going to go with it 
because it's weathering. So, what we got going on up there? Okay. So now then, let's, uh, let's add a little bit of sienna wash. Just in places on here. Oh, I'm going to put my little board underneath there, actually, so that it doesn't doesn't uh, leak over the edge. I'm going to smush this around a little bit. So weathering is going to happen in layers, not all at once, um, because you want to, you don't want to uh, make it look all uniform. Um, ask any painter what's, uh, you know, nothing in their art is going to look exactly pristine and perfect unless, unless that's how they really intended it to be. But, uh, if you're going for realism, you want some randomness and variety in there. So this is kind of simulating rust and aging. Uh, one color of rust anyway. Uh, put a bit on the trucks and the springs. Get a little bit more. Oh, some just got on my cutting mat. Oh well. Put a little bit over the end beams there. Ah, spillage. Okay, where's my paper towel? Let me brush a bit of a, a bit of a cleaning off. Um, where is my black wash now? Let's zoom out a little bit here. So these are just eyedropper bottles that had some vitamins for the kids in it when they were babies. You can use any eyedropper bottle you want or any kind of bottle you want really. I just happen to have those because, well, that's kind of thing that you try and accumulate. Anything that could be useful. You never know when you're going to need something for your modeling. Or when something's going to come in handy. You always have to sort of look at things through your miniature eyes. Yes, I don't have even coverage on the surface there. Like I mentioned, that's intentional. Don't want it even. Get a little bit more here. We're going for a lived in look and fairly heavily weathered. For this one because like I said it's an old car on my railroad. So now then while those are are drying and kind of doing their thing let's see what else we can put on here. Um, We'll get a bit of sandstone. Let's zoom out for a bit here. A little bit of sandstone paint. Actually, I don't need very much, so I'm just going to put it on the bottom there. And mix it with a bit of water just to thin it out. Not into a full wash. I'm also I'm still using that same grody brush. And I think 
dry a little bit of that off. And I'm just going to flick some of it on from below. That's probably too much. Yeah, that's probably too much. But that's better. Sandstone because mud from below the tracks. Um, and actually, where is a mud color? I had some that are called mud. There we go, mud. Give this a shake. I should actually break out my, uh, my paint shaker. You remember that video, don't you? Take a look in the description and, uh, and see my, uh, my old paint shaker video. But I'm not going to use too many colors, so... Well then, I'm, I think I'll just use this same one. I take some of this off, not all of it, because no need to. Hmm, that's the problem with old paint, it's crustiness. Throw that in the garbage. I'm just going to add some of that to this. That's a bit darker. Since this is a new bottle, put a little spooge on the top so I can tell what color it is in the box without having to go digging for it next time. There, it's kind of a darker, dirty, muddy color. Just put a bit on there. Again. Spritz just a little bit of that on there. Need some more water. Where'd my water bottle go? Um, let's set that up on something a little bit. Oh, that looks nice and beat up and well used, doesn't it? Already. How long we've spent on this? Not that long. I'm going to, now, it's gotten a little bit too heavy on the sides of this car, so I'm just going to put a little drop of water on my paper towel. And dub some of this off. Not all of it. Some. Spin it around and do the same thing over on this side. So if you recall, these, these decals aren't water slide decals. They were dry transfers. So I'm not too worried about soaking them back off again. If they were water slide decals, I would have had to put a, sp a spray of something or other on them. To, uh, to protect it a little bit um, from getting wiped off, but I think that'll work pretty well just the way it is. So I'm going to let this dry for a while. Um, I might fiddle with it a little bit more. 
I'm going to let it dry and then when it, when it comes back and it's all dry, or when you come back and it's all dry after a cross feed here, um, we'll add a few more things, a, little, a few more dry things and, uh, and other bits and pieces. So this is just artist's charcoal pencils that I got from the dollar store. That's what, six for a, a buck and a quarter, I think it was. I'm just going to shave some off here. This will take a few minutes. Oh yeah, there's some. Don't know whether that's going to be enough or not. We'll find out. Grab my brush, which is now mostly dry. And I'm going to dust some of that on there. Mush it in, yeah. Use my fingers. I don't like how light some of those areas got, so it looks I mean if I'd been if I knew I'd been carrying concrete on this thing, that would be cool, but you never know what kind of a life this car has had, right? So maybe there was concrete bags on it one time that got at all leaky maybe there is who knows but I know it's an old car that's been in the fleet for a long time so the brush didn't work very well I'm gonna abandon that I'm just gonna use this like many a modeling adage nothing looks more like coal than coal all right so that's nice and dirty now you don't have to worry about getting too too dark um, because with po any of the powdered stuff that you put on there it's going to uh, lighten up a little bit when you throw the uh, the dull coat on it at the end of the process here so get that into all the nooks and crannies that you wanted in wow that looks beat up I don't know if that's too heavy or not. Um, I said it's been decades since I've done any weathering. Um, I'm gonna clean a little bit off the surface just with a damp paper towel. No, no, that's too much over there. Put a bit more on. Hmm, I'd like to get some in there. Let's see if I can get it in with this brush. Get a shorter bristle brush, maybe that'll help. Yeah, we'll try that one. Shorter bristles are going to be stiffer bristles. That's not bad. Okay. Thoroughly made a mess around here. Um, what's next? Okay, huh. I think I would like maybe we to, add a little uh, bit of debris to the top of the car. Some leftover bits of blocking or bracing maybe a couple of pieces of lumber stuck in the stake pocket and broken off we'll want to weather and age that a little bit too um, let me gather some more supplies yeah I think I would like to have a couple of pieces of uh, just stake wood kind of jammed in a pocket and then broken off jaggedly kind of above the deck. Um, maybe one there. And another one over there. Something like that anyway. But, obviously, they can't be brand new wood, can they? So we'll darken them a little bit. You can put a little bit of our powdered charcoal into the mix there. And let those roll around a bit. 
let them dry. Meanwhile, um, there's probably been loads on this thing in the past that have had strapping steel and chains and stuff and maybe some of that's left over. So what I've got here is some chart pack art tape or drafting tape. It is a little black tape that is, where's the size? Doesn't say the size. It's, it's that size there. That's a piece of it right there. So I'm thinking, are these still sticky? He's been sitting on there for a while. I'm thinking some of this might just be, have been left lying loose on the deck after a load was taken off. Um, maybe that piece is a bit too long. I'll give it a chop. There. That one needs to be bent because why wouldn't it be bent? Couple of pieces of that and get one more from over here. Can I crumple it up? Ah, it stuck my finger. I'm good, it's still sticky, but stick that down now. Then, how are you gonna get those to stay put? Well, I need to do it the same way as I get everything to stay stuck on the layout. I'm gonna use dilute white glue and water um this is of course a ridiculous bottle size for this but i'm going to where's one of my little cups here just squirt out just a little tiny bit actually i'm not even going to squirt a bit out I'm just going to catch it onto a generic q-tip here and just Dab it on. Crap. Okay. Close enough. Since that is, of course, way too much. Oh. Wick some of it back up here with a bit of paper towel or the Q-tip thing. Those are pretty subtle. Um, let's see now. Maybe a piece of lumber left, or a couple of pieces of lumber left over from an old load. Um, yes, that's the ones that I was I was dying for steak pockets, but we'll deal with that later. Um, put another piece there. Yeah, I'm just using toothpicks pieces and just trim the end, one end of that square and that one needs a little bit of weathering and actually so does that one I'm gonna put them back down here and wet them, add some more ink to them so I'll throw those on there and just for fun I've also got some miniature chain um, Five bucks for 18 real inches of chain. Let's tip that out. There you go. So I think some of that's going to end up on the deck too. Just kind of a knot of it sitting there. Um, how much? Well, maybe a piece about that long left over from some old load that chain is nicely blackened which is excellent but I think if it's been sitting on there for a while it wouldn't still be black would it I think it might have a little bit of rust So we'll let that sit in the puddle of rust for a while. And we'll toss it up on as well. Um, how are those guys looking? A 
couple more pieces of wood up there. Should I? I'm not even sure if I'm going to do the steak pocket thing that I was talking about before. Maybe I will. Yeah, let's jam that into that one there. Uh, is that the Q-tip that's still got glue on it? Yes, it does. So, a little bit of glue into there. A little dab under there. It doesn't need much. And where's my bit of chain here? Um, having trouble picking that up. Let's get some tweezers and yeah, uh, kind of clumping. I think I'm going to drape that down over there and just leave it like that. And again, I'll get a little tiny drop of glue in there. Now, I'll walk away for a while, let all that dry, and come back with what might be the last step, the dull coat. So more time has passed, and here I have the flat car in my janky old spray paint booth. Um, got it sitting elevated on some clothespins. I took the wheels off, so it's just sitting on the trucks. Because I don't really want to get a uh, dull coat onto the treads of the wheels. And this is Tester's Dull Coat, which is a clear spray lacquer with a matte finish. Um, there are other brands that have similar things. But this is the one that I have, so this is the one that I'm going to use. Now then, spray that in there. Give her a spin around, hit the other side, give the end a little bit of a dusting. So you notice that as the dull coat goes on, it really mutes down the, uh, the weathering colors that were put on there, right? Um, some of that's going to come back when it dries, not all of it, which is one of the reasons why I went so heavy duty with the weathering. The other is, of course, that I haven't done this for years and I'm way out of practice. So I'll just hit this last end here and back to drying time. Time passes. Okay, it's out of the paint booth, it's dried, and here we are. Notice that, uh, as I said, the, uh, the dull coat really toned down the really extreme weathering that was on there. So now it just looks like a well-used grubby car. I think that came out pretty good. My one little piece of wood that was glued onto the deck fell off. I don't care. It was never supposed to be there in the first place. So, there you go. That is a nice, quick, dirty, fairly grubby weathering job on that uh, really basic flat car kit. And I think it looks pretty damn good. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have anything to say uh, down in the comments, um, if you feel like subscribing, that would be awesome. Again, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.